third round of the Z Pro Tri-Series presented by Zwift. This week, we are heading down to Crit City for 14 laps of the Bell Lap course. It'll be fast and furious this morning, no doubt, with an elite field of women assembled in what will be uh, a race that'll be full gas from start to finish. Uh, this week, we've made the fields a bit smaller to accommodate the action on this tight Crit course, but also to help us improve the verification process for this race and future races as well, we're actually going to have a B race that's being held concurrently with this race uh, to help uh, athletes in that verification process, and we'll move some of those athletes forward in weeks to come. But this week for this race, it's going to be exciting. I, you know, I think this this field we've got right now, it looks like we have about 25 athletes on the start line ready to go for this week's race. I, I'm Matt Lieto here. I'm here with Sean Jefferson. And uh, as you see on screen, we're here with, uh, or sorry, at Crit City. Crit City is its own um, its own course. It's a, a event-only uh, course. Sean, tell us a little bit about this uh, race course. Yeah, I mean, uh, given the name Crit City, it's, it's made for those short, fast loops, hard, intense racing, and very little hills. It's, uh, you can see, eight meters of elevation per loop. So it's going to be a pretty quick, fast, lap after lap race and um it'll be a dull death for some of these people it'll be go out hard and just hang 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 very dull until it becomes uh sharp uh <laughs> really quickly right um so you know with the crit it's always you know fast and furious and it's uh you know really intense from start to finish but in in swift racing is that different is that is, is that accelerated more or how does that how does that change as in any Zwift race, those first couple of minutes are going to be really intense. Get out very hard, watch 
watch the athletes around you, make sure no gaps open up. But this course in particular, if you get dropped, the likelihood of catching up is literally almost zero. Um, because of the speeds they'll be racing at, if it's going to be very hard for a chase group to work up to a, a big group. So if, if you see one or two get away, there's a chance. But if a gr even group splits off the front, it's, it's going to be near impossible to catch back up. Having that course with eight meters per lap, you know, people probably chuckle a little bit when you say that, but those eight meters on this little climb on the course, that, that can be pretty impactful, right? If you're kind of already on the, on the rivet, so to speak. Yeah. And it's, it's a place where some attacks up the hill. I mean, I don't even want to call it a hill. It's a, uh, it's a little bump in the road, but it's, it's one of the few places you can make an attack and try to get away if, if that's your plan. Lots of riders uh, today are going to be pushing that pace. Uh, you know, the course is going to define who gets dropped and when they get dropped, but more importantly, it's going to be the riders. And here are some uh, of kind of our pre-race favorites up on screen. Again, it's a smaller field right now. I think we've got about uh, 24, 25 women uh, lined up in the start pen. Uh, but these are the ones to watch, you know, some that we've seen uh, the last few weeks. Lucy Charles Barkley, obviously, she's been up in those top positions. Sophie Caldwell has been one that's uh, pushed the pace. Uh, Cassandra Bogrand is an ITU athlete that has had great success over that distance. Um, Holly Lawrence, uh, Sky Monch, and Kimberly Morrison here with her first uh, Zwift race. And uh, she's pretty talented on the bike, so I wouldn't be surprised to see her up there. But being her first race... And if, uh, on Zwift, but also as a crit, that's going to be, she's going to learn a lot this week, right, Sean? Yeah, I mean, it's it's those first few minutes in Zwift are kind of make or break. If if you don't ha go in with the mindset of, I got to make it through the five minutes with the front group, and you you let up just a little bit, you you can get dropped pretty easily here, and, and kind of your race is done after the first couple minutes. So being very aware and being very, patient like patient with your power making sure that if three minutes in you need to you need to blast and kind of go all in at that point it's it's make or break time and i think you know that experience you know knowing when to move around knowing how to stay in the groove to be in the front but uh not be working too much but what what else is super important uh, if you're a new with racer is uh taking advantage of these power-ups uh, right. It's uh, there's a gamification of the race. So uh, power ups are super important. And I'd, I'd say even more so in a in a crit, Sean, but maybe not so much to get off the front, but to stay in the group. Yeah. And you'll you'll see the power ups um, being used throughout this course. They they get one power lap today. So there'll be a bunch of power ups being used. Um, I think there's with 14 laps, 14 power ups. We'll see them all the time. Here we go. With the, the arrow power up, the draft power up, and the lightweight being the most impactful in today's race, um, drafting, right. you'll get that little bit extra rest when you need it, and it goes for 30 seconds, whereas the arrow and the lightweight are just 15-second power ups, but very deadly in a sprint or on those little little bumps of hills we have today. I think the, the fact that we're going to be seeing a ton of these power ups being given and used with all these laps uh, you kind of uh, you're going to see a lot more being burnt during a race than than we're used to. And again, I think in in this race, it's more to, uh, people are going to be using them to to burn them, but also to make sure they can just stay stay in that group as we go through this course. Now we're not not too far away from the start. And again, normal Zwift race is going to be start of the start is going to be fast from the gun. No doubt that's going to be the same, if not uh, even more so. On the curtain, here we go. We are in the pen. 27 seconds to go. Uh, look at that field, John. Yeah, and this is the time, uh, 20 seconds left. Um, in Zwift, you do want to have a little bit of power right before the gun goes off. With three to four seconds left, they should be up around, I would say, 110% of FTP. They should be working really hard right before, just so when the gun drops, they're off and to the races and to the front pretty quickly. Absolutely. And no doubt they're up to speed, but now they are getting moving. Looks like one one didn't get on the pedals uh, quite quick enough, but we see right now uh, we're on Sophie Caldwell. She has had uh, some great performances the last few weeks, but more than anything, she's been kind of an animate, animator of uh, these races. Yeah, and she's an ITU athlete, so this, this crit style racing should suit her 
suit her really well. Um, we've got a few IT athletes in the mix today, so watch out for them to be to be strong. Um, you'd expect this course and this race style to to suit them. Things are getting stretched out already as they cruise through uh, the early sections of this course. Again, super short, uh, quick course, 1.2 miles, about 1.9 uh, kilometers. But look at that. We're already at an 8% grade really quickly. And Sean, tell us a little bit about how like these grades look painful. 8% grade is painful. But when you're moving along in a group uh, in a crit situation like this where you're going you know, maybe 27 miles an hour, do, do you really feel all those undulations of just a couple hard pedal strokes? Or what, what are those hills going to feel like to these yeah, athletes? It, yeah, for today's course, it's kind of like you're saying, um, through a lot of those little like we push really short bursts of 8, 10 seconds, it's kind of a get out of the saddle, pound away for two to three seconds, and then settle back in. Um, so it is. It's it really does simulate cornering, coming in and out of that corner, getting back up to speed, and really getting over the pedals, out of the saddle for a couple seconds, and then settling back in. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great shot of uh, Sophie Colwell. Uh, you know, we see her on screen uh, on the crit, but then also uh, on screen at home on the lower left hand side. So that's uh, Sophie has been. Uh, as we said, an aggressive athlete in these races, and no doubt uh, if she sees an opportunity to stretch the field out, she's going to do it. And there you go. This group has, uh, as we said, this field has been, uh, we've, we've shrunk the field size to, to make sure we keep these uh, athletes, you know, the, the best of the sport, uh, but also to make sure we can maintain kind of verification of everybody um, and their power throughout uh, this race series. So a much smaller field than we're used to. So, Sean, do you think... Part of it with uh, putting a smaller field in a crit is to keep the group from blowing up quite so much. Do you think we'll see this 25-woman field stay together a lot longer than we've seen these fields in the weeks past? I, I definitely think it'll stay together longer, especially on this course. Um, with it being relatively flat, very small ups and downs, it, it's going to be in the first few laps. You might see some athletes get caught out, especially at the start. Um and once they get the rhythm of the course, they know when and where the hills are, when to push power, when to relax. Um, that'll that'll just come after a couple laps. And I, I think it'll, if it dwindles, it'll be very small, one or two riders, unless there's a really, really massive attack somewhere during this, during this race. Uh, to me, it's funny, funny to watch. We talked about Kimberly Morrison and the fact that it's new racing for her. And I just saw an athlete, uh, you know, uh, standing through and went all the way through the field and up to the front. And no doubt it was uh, uh, that was her. She was making sure she could uh, put herself back at the front of the race and kind of restart. Maybe she didn't start off quite as qu quickly as the other athletes. Yeah. Did, but... And they're yeah, they're rolling through one of the little roller sections here. You can see them using their power ups. So they've got some of the ones with the ghosts. Um, you know, it's probably not going to make much difference here today. It, it, you disappear for 15 seconds in a race like this, it, yeah. unless you're really trying to get off the front and there's not a real reason to do that here. Um, you see them just using them just to get rid of them. So the next time they come through the banner, they'll get uh, a new power up and they're not sitting on the ghost um, for the next couple laps. I see the cool little ghost emoji. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, someone using a burrito right now. That's uh, again, just someone burning, uh, burning it. But uh, Emma Plum was just on screen there. Uh, that's an athlete that obviously pushed the pace, really broke the field up last week on Box Hill. Uh, she's an athlete that is going to do well again here today and, and certainly probably going to push uh, the hillier sections. Uh, again, there are just a few pedal strokes, but I bet you uh, she's going to be the one with uh, the high watts per kilo over some of those little pitches, but this entire group still together. Uh, so some, you know, I, I'm stoked to see kind of uh, what we were hoping was going to happen has happened so far here today, five minutes into the race. Um, all the athletes uh, are able to kind of stay in the group. And Sean, tell us a little bit how that works. If you've got a group of a hundred, is it harder to, if, if you line up later, it's a little bit harder to stay in that front group, right? Yeah, so, I mean, Zwift is, is very tactical and strategic. Um, since we've moved to a, a smaller group, um, it's a little bit easier to kind of stay connected just because you can see everything. Um, in Zwift, it shows the closest 100 riders. So if there's a break outside, like 100 riders ahead of you, you technically wouldn't even see it. So you really want to be aware of positioning in Zwift, especially in a really large group. Um, the racing in the smaller group here does help 
with riders being able to be aware, be present, watch with the moves ahead and not have to sit so far back. Um, with these groups, I would, you know, usually I wouldn't recommend getting towards the back, but in a, in a manageable group of 25, you, you can see what's going on. It's very easy to see if someone's on the front pushing or if they're slowing down and it's starting to pack up. Um, so a little bit, little bit easier, I think, today for some of these athletes in, with tactics and not getting dropped, but the pain and the amount of effort going in is still very, very high. And we can see one athlete kind of dangling on the back yeah. um, every time we go through this little like up and down here. It's not a place you want to be. Yeah, it looks like she's burning. Uh, she's burning a power up as well, trying to get back on that uh, on that group. But the draft uh, isn't going to work unless you get on that group either. And then here's uh, on screen. We were talking earlier. Uh, Kim Morrison, uh, first time out in Zwift racing, and it does look like she has been dropped. So no doubt, some learning pains for uh, Kimberly Morrison. Yeah, it's it's it. You you tend to see this with first time athletes. Lift. It, it, it is a very different style. You have to know the tactics, positioning, even just those little power-ups that you use save you an extra couple percent when it gets really hard. And if you don't use them properly, you're just, you can be spit out the back relatively quickly. Um, there is another thing to be aware of in Zwift, and a lot of people don't, don't think of it this way, is you can theoretically get a mechanical. But, you know, you don't talk about it as, uh, you know, you don't drop your chain or you don't, uh, flat, you get a flat out there on the road, but there are with technology, there are some things that you know your Wi Fi can go really poor signal for a second. And you, if your power goes to zero in Swift, it's really hard to make that back up. So, there, even though they don't get a flat tire, there are some technical issues that do happen in Swift where athletes can get dropped. We saw it last week with Johnny Brown or Alistair Brownlee right in the middle of the front pack, and then all of a sudden, in a flat stretch, he whether it was his kicker or power meter or something, just dropped his power to zero for five seconds, and he was kind of out of the race, out of the front pack. Talking about that, you know, Kimberly Morrison, we saw her off the back, and that she was 40 seconds behind already. And, I mean, that accelerates pretty quickly. And it was, you know, she was 10 seconds back, then 20. So it was kind of a constant uh, distance, uh, you know, that she was continuing going further back. But in a lap and a half, two laps, she's lost... 40 seconds and Kimberly Morrison is probably if you looked at watts per kilo and performances certainly over the longer distance she's one of the stronger cyclists in this field so it shows kind of what that experience is and again maybe a technical issue but uh, experience can have a ton to do uh, with your performance and you know I was talking to a few of the women and a few of the men before the races last week and you know I said no matter what you think you've got to start out harder and I think that's one of those things that she was burning matches to catch back up after she had maybe a bit of a, a slower start uh, that kind of caught her off guard but going through this rolling section again up at eight percent just a few pedal strokes is definitely Sophie Caldwell pushing the pace there 4.7 watts per kilo currently 171 beats per minute that's uh she's working hard yeah, and you see she's using her featherweight through these little little bumps here. So, I mean, these are the times to use it. Um, everyone doing it right Using the featherweight over those little 8% kicks, making it a little bit easier to roll through that, not use as much power, and then settle back in here. You see a lot of the draft power-ups now, too. So they've gone through the hard section, the hit little roller, roller section, and now they're just using that extra 30 seconds of double draft to save their legs, get their heart rate down, and stick into this into this pack right now some athletes still we saw struggling uh to stay on the group we did earlier saw uh dola was having uh trouble staying on the front of that group right now we see bugrand bogrand excuse me uh at the front of the course and she's pushing that pace early as you said an itu athlete that's had great success over uh distances similar to this so definitely watch out for her uh, she's a talented, talented athlete pushing just about four watts per kilo. And again, Sean, I think in, in any any bike racing, but certainly in Zwift racing, it is who can, obviously you have to have the power to be able to sustain high watts per kilo over this half hour, 35 minute distance. But in Zwift racing, it often you'll see the people that win maybe have a little less watts per kilo than some of the others. And, and tell us about how that might be and, and what that means. Yeah, you, I mean, it's it's same town the road. You don't want to be save your legs, sit in, be t especially on this course. Um, if you can never hit the front but stay in the pack all the way to the very end, you 
you know, you will have less watts and finish with a lower average watts per kilogram or or average watts than, than someone who may be out attacking every time on every corner or or just at the front pushing the pace. Like uh, we got Sarah Pump Campiano up front now pushing the pace. So if you're tactical, you stay out of the wind. Um, that that all helps with your your final finish, and you have a little extra power at the at the end to to sprint past everyone as the as the finish line approaches. To explanation: you, you definitely need to reserve as much energy as possible. The goal is to be in the group, but spend uh, as little amount of energy as you can to stay in the group. And right now, someone who's uh, struggling, not struggling necessarily, but definitely pushing hard to stay in that group is Sky Monch on screen. Five point two. Watch per kilo as she hits uh, featherweight going up this climb uh, just to get back in the middle of that group as she passes an athlete that now looks to be kind of hanging off the back. And Sky is one of those athletes that she's been at each week of the Z Pro Tri Series, and she's one of the be better cyclists, you know, in in pro triathlon, no doubt. But she hasn't made the front group yet, and this is certainly the longest we've seen her in the not certain. I think maybe the first week she was with the front group a little bit longer, but she hasn't been a player. Uh, down the road, and I think uh, this format and this smaller field, she's having a, a little bit better show this morning. Yeah, and this this race tends will tend to have it stay a little more packed up throughout the majority of it. I, I think we will see some splits if there's a major attack, but I, for the most part, it'll keep the group together. Um, this this Crit City course is, I think it's roughly two and a half minutes per lap maybe a little faster on some of the others, but um, you get two really good spikes through the middle of this, through, the, through this course. You get one through that little roller section that they, they currently went through, and then there's, there'll be a little spike coming up here where it's, it's like 10 to 15 seconds of really high power, and then you settle in. 10 to 15 seconds of really high power, and then settle back in. So after 14 laps of this, I think we might see one or two start to get popped off the back, but um, we'll yeah. see how this race unfolds. Uh, little sections of power on power off do you do you feel like uh you know we have athletes that are good at all sorts of different distances right uh that's one cool thing kind of about this series is we see lucy charles barkley on screen angela nath in that field caldwell uh in there as well as bogrand so lots of different uh strengths uh over different distances do you think there's some athletes maybe that are, uh, you know, more strength based, like Ironman or 70.3 athlete that would try to get away a few laps to go? And, and where would that, where do you think that would happen? Yeah, I, I, I would predict um, strong attack through or the hills and then trying to maintain that over the top and to the finish. Um, so yeah, like a longer attack from further out for some of the Ironman athletes. I think the ITU athletes will be waiting trying to conserve as much energy save like these little spikes in power settle back in and then try to go for it at the finish i mean that's that's their strength is those short sharp bursts of speed i i don't think yeah. we'll see too much of that until towards the finish line but yeah no i think you're probably probably right uh you know i of course love to see an early attack so maybe if somebody feels like uh, the group is tiring out and they've got a great power up uh, to use as a launch pad they'll do that but uh this crit city course awesome if you haven't had the ability to join an event uh that uses the crit city course uh you should give it a shot it's pretty fun the rolly rolly uh section through here i'm gonna go by um some uh you know very uh zwiftified uh banners and uh really cool uh buildings there on the right uh, as well as that jumbotron as we go through here as well so i actually haven't raced uh uh, or ridden on this course, but uh, it sounds like you have recently, Sean. Yeah, I, I try to get out and do the course uh, the day before each of the race is familiar and be refreshed um, on, on the turns and the hills and get the feel for it. This course, yeah, like you said, it's an event only only course. You, the only way you can get to it is is through racing or through a group ride. So it's, it is a little harder to kind of do a course recon, but they did have events on yesterday. And while I was out there, you know who was out there racing as well? Lionel Sanders, <laughs> doing his homework. Yeah, that's an athlete that uh, definitely does his homework. But right now on screen, it looks like things are stretching out a little bit. 
uh, we did have a gap in the group there for a bit. Somebody was uh, caught sleeping. Uh, maybe one of the uh, North Americans uh, didn't get enough coffee this morning, but definitely a gap opened up there for a second, and uh, a lot of power was uh, placed on the pedals uh, to go back, and it does seem like there still is another gap from behind. So curious to see how big this gap is and who's in this little uh, chase group. We've got two athletes right now getting on, uh, connecting back uh, to the field. Yeah, there was a there was a significant little gap there. I, it's hard to see who, if there, anybody was still back there or if they've made it back to the group. Lucy's now off the front, pushing the pace. Um, it could have been her that was just slightly off the back and pushed through, and now she's at the front. Um, but I think there was an athlete or two that's still still towards the back that I, I don't see anymore. Yeah, we yeah, have two like athletes two back there. Yeah, two athletes dropped off the back. That's Piampiano, uh, Potter, and it looks like Holly Lawrence dropped off nine seconds back. So uh, we'll see. And I think what, what you saw there was Lucy Charles Barkley saw that those three athletes had a bit of a gap, and she went to the front to make sure uh, she was doing what she could to make sure they don't get back on. And, Sean, if they don't get back on in the next minute, they're, they're not getting back on, right? Uh, I don't even know if it's the next minute. I think it's pretty much – the gap is is solidified at this point um with it with the riders up front and the with the pace they're riding at it's you you let a 10 second gap open with two riders i don't i don't think there's any way they're coming back go ahead as we go through this rolly section here uh, as i said earlier emma Pollan is one that's going to push uh the power definitely up that rolly and I, I saw seven watts per kilo there uh for just uh, a second uh, she definitely was doing that so she's pushing the pace on the front knowing that some of uh, the more talented or some of her very talented competitors have uh, been dropped off the back. Uh, definitely uh, Piampiano and Holly Lawrence uh, are two of the stronger cyclists uh, in non-draft uh, legal triathlon. And to have them off the back of the group uh, just 17 minutes in is good for those other athletes. When it comes down to a sprint, you know, the smaller the field, the better percentage chance you have of winning, right? So some people wonder, why are you burning energy to get rid of other athletes? But it's often it's those athletes that are just hanging on the group that also pack that that sprint power right so if you have the opportunity if you smell blood in the water so to speak you want to make sure you pounce right yeah and it's it's just a numbers game would you rather sprint against 10 or 15 people or four so i think i think they like their chances the, the smaller the group gets anyone who's in a sprint would let, rather see a, a smaller sprint than um, a, a big pack like this because the athletes that are sitting in just kind of saving their legs and not taking any turns will likely have that power come come a sprint finish and you want to kind of try to shed them through these little little rollers and little hills and and get them out of the race we see emma plant on screen pushing the pace other athletes uh that we recognize in that field uh in the front field as well sky Monch still hanging on, uh, doing her best to make sure she stays in this group so she can be there to fight for the sprint. But Lucy Charles Barclay is in there. Uh, we had Kelsey Withrow is in there as well. There's Sky on screen. Uh, Jenna Nett, she's one of the, the, the very strong, uh, some one of the strongest cyclists in uh, the long distance non-drafting racing. Um, so to see her, often you see the those kind of diesel engines that uh, really have that back half power in Ironman distance racing. You don't necessarily see them in these uh, line up well in these shorter races and Jenna Nett's doing a great job uh hanging in there uh, we have Ruth Assel is in there Kinsey Lane uh from uh Bend Oregon is up there as well uh we see uh Van Heerden is in in this field as well as more uh, Jackie Herring in here as well I is, she's one that we haven't spoke a lot about Sean but uh, I think she definitely has uh the power to hit that last lap with good energy left to spend yeah, and we, we talk about the ITU athletes having the, you know, pot potentially having an advantage in a race like today, but there haven't been any ITU races this year at all. Um, so, like, they, yeah. they, and especially with kind of the way the lockdowns are going, you don't get a lot of group rides, so the only way to do it is in Zwift. So it's, I think the, the advantage goes to the riders who have been doing the group rides on, on Zwift indoors, really working on that, that high power high intensity and for for that 30 to 40 minute period time frame we've yeah, got a little absolutely. bit strung out on the back here uh, this is where p these athletes got to be very careful that it doesn't get too much of a gap but it looks like they're closing it back down 
seems to be pretty vulnerable at the moment. She's moved herself towards the front of the group, but she was, uh, you know, again, she's one that I said is one of the very uh, strong athletes in this group as far as uh, known for her cycling discipline. But she was off the back and had to, to go near six watts per kilo on a flat to get back to this group. You can't afford to burn those kind of extra matches in this race and expect to have the energy to, to sprint against those that have been doing a, a better job of kind of hiding out. Yeah, and that's that's the danger of being at the back, letting those little gaps open. If you have to spend that extra 10 seconds to close it back down, the next time they hit the hill and the next time they hit the hill, if it keeps pushing you to the back and you keep having to do that, it's only a matter of time before that rubber band snaps and then you're completely off the back and gone. And uh, one that doesn't find herself near the back of the group at all uh, very frequently is Lucy Charles. Barclay, you know, she, if anything, she's maybe spends a little bit too much time at the front, but she's one that has spent so much time with racing that she knows the best way for her to get through a race. And often she might just kind of use the group momentum. We see her now at the back, the group momentum to move up to the front. And maybe when she's up at the front, she's actually pushing out a little bit less watts. But here we go uh, as we have Lucy Charles Barkley coming up on what looks like a lapped athlete, which is going to happen on this short of a course with a, a group, a front group moving this quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's it's only 1.9K. 1. 1. So if you get dropped and kind of finish up your ride, soft pedaling, we'll, we'll lap a few athletes here if, unless they unless they exit the race themselves. There we go. People burning their power-ups uh, through this rolly section. A good time to do it. At uh, least Charles Barkley on there just burnt one as well. The athlete on the front using the draft power-up, not doing a huge advantage there. And it looks like Emma Pallant just went by uh, using an aero power-up and putting in a hard, hard effort over that roller. She is definitely on a move. That actually wasn't just her moving through. So she's put a second on and let's see if she can get anybody to come across. Yeah, this definitely looks like an attack and she's done it in the right spot. Use a power up, gone through the hills, really pushed it and it's going to stretch the field out now. And some of those athletes that were at the back of the pack may be in trouble if they don't really respond here. You can see it's very yeah, strong so she out kinda now. Yeah, she was hanging up, uh, hanging off uh, a little bit off the front. She went at about 4.2 watts per kilo to wait to see if anybody came across. And uh, they definitely have. But, man, that was textbook from her. You could see her move through the field, use the energy of those rollers, that descent, and the draft going through that group, but then hitting the arrow power up right when she hit the front to kind of get that gap into whether or not she was trying to get away or she was trying to make sure other athletes were put uh, on the rivet or dropped off the back. Uh, the, the latter definitely was accomplished as we see a few athletes just dangling on to the back of this group. Yeah, and it looks like Sophie Coldwell and Lucy Charles have quickly come around and kept the pace hot. So if there are any athletes gotten gapped or back, they it's hard to tell if some of those athletes have gotten dropped. I can't tell now, but it looks like maybe one or two might have got shed. A hard, or that could have been one of the lapped athletes we yeah. saw just a second ago. Lapped athletes, for sure, as we see Sophie Caldwell on screen. But we did uh, see for a second we had Kessler, Monch, and Annette were actually dropped uh, just from a few seconds from the field, but I see Annette now in that front group. So I'm assuming they're all back on. We'll get confirmation to see if all those three athletes got back on, but Jen Annette definitely uh, back in the field and Kessler, yeah. So those three launches in the uh, in that front group as well. So they were gapped. Emma Pallant definitely uh, put uh, a bit of a, uh, an effort in that uh, stretched that field out. And, it, you know, she had it look like it was planned. She used momentum to get there. So she spent a little bit of energy to do it. But certainly those three athletes of Kessler, Monch, and Annette had to use a lot more energy uh, to get back on. And as I said, it seemed like Annette has been burning those matches uh, somewhat frequently. So that's going to it's gonna be hard for her to, to make it to that last lap uh, with a bunch of energy for a sprint. Yeah, and if, if these attacks keep happening, the I think this this group will dwindle down a little bit. It looks like so being very aggressive again with Pollen, and every time they attack and make these moves, it's people dropped or get get stuck in a bad position and have to use way too much energy, way too many times to get back to back to the pack. I think you you'll see these athletes maybe after these races and the crit especially because it's so much more about where you are in a group uh where your 
where you're sitting, using energy, wasting energy. Uh, I think you'll see some of these athletes maybe take a little journal time after uh, each race to make sure, note to self, don't do this, don't do this. And I, I, I think uh, certainly, you know, athletes like Kimberly Morrison is going to go back to the drawing board to a certain extent to n know that she's prepared for the next, next race. Maybe she'll jump into some other races in between, but definitely a lot to learn your first couple times out on a Zwift race and certainly uh, when you're racing in Crit City. Uh, there's a lot of races on Zwift currently, so during the week, um, athletes can find a bunch of different races at different distances and lengths to really kind of hone their skills and fine tune kind of what this Zwift racing is all about. Um, learning kind of that early, that high power early on and, and getting just getting prepared for these these races with their their fellow triathletes. Uh, Sophie Colwell at the front of this group again. Uh, certainly uh, she's comfortable being there and we're uh, getting used to seeing her up there and calling her name in these races because she's definitely always uh, what we refer to as an animator uh, out here on course. So uh, we are now 10 laps in of 14. So just 8K to go. Uh, we're 26 minutes in so far here today, but just four laps to go, Sean. So tactics, uh, is this a point where everybody's just waiting for somebody else to do something? Or is there, you know, are you trying to save as much energy now? Or are you trying to uh, use as much energy? And, and are, are you still trying to drop people off the back of the group? Or w what's going through these athletes' head? I, I I think we will get a couple more attacks here, try to, try to get some of these athletes that are just barely hanging on off the back and whittle, whittle this group down a little bit more and, and have it come to a, sprint, a smaller group sprint finish. Uh, it's it's going to be the athletes that know the course the best too. Um, there's, you know, they, they go through this little section here with these little hills and we'll see if anyone does try to attack again, but it's it's knowing the course, knowing the finish line, where the finish line is. And, and again, with only four laps left, picking and choosing when you're using your power-ups is going to be really important. If you get a arrow power-up, a or, uh, featherweight, you want to. You might be wanting yeah. to save it for the finish line coming up, if and not risk lose getting a burrito by the, by lap two. Has has dialed in how to go over those rollers effectively and how to time uh, when she's using these power ups. Right, so now she this, used the, yeah. used the momentum of the group, got off front, and uh, Lucy Charles Barkley, who she was in a break with last week, uh, came straight across to her. Yeah, we got a big move here with uh, both Lucy and Emma pushing the pace. A couple more riders joining them, but it, it's it's really really hot hot pace on the front, and I'm, I can imagine it's very strung up behind. We might lose a, another rider to here if the pace stays up. Starting already, we had twelve people, uh, twelve athletes, excuse me, going into that uh, that rolly section where Emma attacked, and now we look and we see Sky Monch is four seconds back. Uh, Van Herden is four seconds back as well. Nath is one seconds back. Caldwell looks uh, to be pushing the pace up front, but certainly that's going to, uh, you know, whittle this group down to eight uh, athletes. Looks like nine athletes as well. Uh, so Meredith Kessler just off three seconds back off that group. Sophie Caldwell in that group, as is Angela Nath, Jackie Herring, Kinsey Lane, uh, and more as well. Yeah, it's definitely <clears throat> looks like it's down to nine, maybe. Um, it looks Van Heerden's hanging off the back at three seconds. Jackie Hearing's still in it. So it looks like eight athletes right now with two just dangling right off the back. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to make this, make it back up to this pack. No, it's going to be tough for sure. There we go. Group of four. Awesome overhead shot with the group of four. In that group of four is Kessler, Monch, Annette, and Nadia is in there as well. So uh, definitely uh, pretty pretty tough times. Uh, kind of all hands on deck, so to speak, uh, trying to get across as we only have uh, about two and a half, three laps to go, six kilometers. Uh, Angela Nath is one that's kind of hidden a little bit uh, today, but she's certainly one that has a bunch of power. She's one of those uh, athletes over that long distance that's really good in the back half. So uh, again, I think you were talking earlier, there's some athletes that are really good at the short distance, um, but those Ironman uh, athletes or those long, long course athletes that have really good diesel power, you know, they might not have the sharpness, but they're not gonna be tired when you get to this last lap, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that strength will definitely come into play as, as, as we're already at 29 minutes. We've got another 
5k to go so you, you know it is still a 35 minute race so strength is always going to be important in these races it's not 15 20 minutes of, of really really high power it looks like that group did a pretty good job of staying in they're still only two three seconds back yeah. it hasn't exploded or ballooned up to eight to ten yet um but they just went through the rollers we'll see if it continues at three seconds or it continues to go the wrong way it looks like still nadia and meredith were rolling at about three seconds back sky munch too um yep. We'll see if they can I, keep it close. Yeah, I just noticed the same thing. Like to me, that's shocking that they're still three or four seconds back. And that's when you're, you know, that's hard choices to be made when you're at the front of this this lead group with Lucy Charles Barclay and Emma Plant. Like, okay, do we continue to worry about that group at all? Do we put any effort in, or do we know that those ladies at the back are, are burning so many matches and so much energy to catch up that realistically, yes, they might get back on if we don't continue to push the pace, but they're not gonna have the energy to sprint. And kind of as I say that, that gap opens up. So Skymanch, uh, Nadia Van Heerden, uh, they're 10 seconds behind, uh, so they're not coming back. So it looks like we've got a group of, what is it? Seven athletes, eight athletes, uh, at the front of this race, and in that group of eight is Ruth Assel. We have uh, Kelsey Withrow, Angela Nath, uh, Marr, Lucy Charles Barkley, Emma Pallant, uh, Sophie Caldwell, and Jackie Herring. I think I got all of them there. So super elite group of eight. Um, Sean, I'm, I, I think this worked out. I, I like how we've got this smaller field, and now we've got an elite group of eight kind of looking at each other with two laps to go. Yeah, it's it's definitely whittled down in those those – 9, 10, 11 spot place athletes worked really hard in that last K to try to hang in, but the gap's up to 11 seconds and they, the, it's it's a definitive gap. That's There's going to be no coming back from that. So with 4K to go, Matt, who do you got taking the win today? I thought, I was wondering if we'd make it uh, maybe till a K to go until we started uh, <laughs> getting our call, but uh, nice work there. Um, I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> Kelsey Withrow. Uh, kind of there we go. She's on screen too. Uh, she's got great cycling experience. Obviously, very strong uh, cyclist in triathlon, but she was a bike racer, so she has some tactical uh, knowledge. And I see her riding on Zwift all the time. Uh, we uh, give each other uh, thumbs up uh, frequently as we uh, ride by, and definitely done some rides together. So I think she's one that has a bunch of experience. Uh, what do you think, Sean? I'm gonna go with Sophie Caldwell. She's been right racing really well on Zwift. Um, Part of the Zwift Super League team, she's been top five in the last couple tri Z Pro tri races we've had. I think it's her day to to take a win here. See, both of us will probably be wrong, but that's what we're here for. <laughs> um, so you can kind of uh, see, send all your comments in uh, to Sean. Um, I, I won't read them, but here we go. Somebody using a ghost again. I think that's more uh, not trying to get an advantage, but trying to burn uh, the power up to to hope that they get. Uh, the one that they want. And Sean, you're the pro working at Zwift. You know the inside outs. If you're at this course and you've got two laps to go, what power up are you crossing your fingers that you get next time you go under this banner? The arrow power up. So it's it's the one that looks like an arrow helmet. You want that, uh, you want your CDA to be dropped, especially in a sprint finish. The second best one would be the featherweight. So look for one of those two. Those both will be, will be very beneficial in a sprint finish, but Definitely the arrow power up on a course like Crit City. I'd agree. And with 3K to go, at least Charles Barkley had a little bit of a gap up front and then uh, kind of has gone back into uh, the middle of that group uh, as well. Uh, so she's uh, part of that group of eight looking for the finish line and trying to do what they can to get in the right position in this technical course with all these kind of rollers and turns you definitely want to make sure you use the momentum of the group to not use much energy and, and definitely now is the time to, to conserve as much energy as possible uh, we see those chasers jenna net nadia van herden and uh, i believe uh, sky monch was in there they're about 30 seconds back now so uh, top 10 is all within 30 seconds but that front group of eight now with just over one lap to go yeah and you can you can see lucy's been at the front quite a bit uh, emma pollen's been at the front quite a bit as well they're they're being a trying to maybe shed another athlete or two before we roll into the finish and you can see we're just going through the finish arch here so this is where the, yeah. where they where they're going to have to come through, and that's the sprint line right there. They just crossed under. So, being aware of of how the course right. works and going 
knowing exactly where that finish line is is going to be important with positioning in this last couple laps. Kind of how these athletes have uh, have gone through these laps in the past, as we see Lucy Charles Barkley definitely working hard uh, on the left hand side of the screen and the right hand side of the screen. Is to me, I noticed Emma has has really knows how to use her momentum over this section specifically, but she certainly is using her brain, not just her brawn as she goes through this course, right? So I would say Emma has a pretty good shot at a win here. Also, uh, Jackie Herring is one that we haven't seen at the front. Often that means you're either hanging on by a thread or you're smart and you're comfortably in that group and maybe she's got a lot of energy. But right now, Lucy Charles Barkley at the front of the group. Emma Pallant actually attacking in her favorite section, yeah. Sean. She's got a <laughs> second gap over the field. Yeah, you called it again. Right through that right through that uh, little rolly section, she attacked again and has, put, has strung it out a quite quite big gap there. Um, we'll see if these girls are going to have to really put some power down to catch back up to her, but it's still 1K to go, and uh, I think they're going to group back up, and it will be a sprint finish here. And that was a big match. I don't think I don't think Emma's going to have a, a, a sprint uh, with w less than 1K to go after that. I think that was her trying to win the race, um, and she's been brought back, and uh, maybe she'll prove me wrong, but uh, Emma Plant now at about 4 watts per kilo, uh, right in the middle of this group with about 700 meters left in this race, a group of eight. Lucy Charles Barkley at the back of the group, Sean. That's a pretty good place. Yeah, here we go. So they're they're lining up. We'll see once they make this turn with a couple hundred meters to go, who, who launches their power-ups and who has what, and see if it plays in. Uh, positioning looks good for Caldwell. She's up in third position. Now she moves to the front. So very strong riding from Caldwell. Pollant's still up there. Here we go. 400 meters left. Power, yeah, we saw eight uh, over eight watts per kilo there for a second, so she's moving around. Uh, somebody using the ghost. Uh, who is that using the ghost? We got Lucy Charles Barkley at the front. Nobody knows where she's at. A couple ghosts going off. Uh, so there we go. Lucy Charles Barkley, Sophie Caldwell at the front battling. Uh, the gaps are opening up. It looks like it's three are still in it. It's Marr and Caldwell and Lucy Charles Barkley at the sprint, but have they gone too early? Here we go, meters. the finish line right ahead. Caldwell with a sprint, moving, going, going. Get hard to tell there. Very I close think, with Caldwell. Yeah, I think it might have been Moore that got across the uh, finish line first, but Caldwell was right there as well. And uh, man, hard to see. Moore, uh, you know, not many of you maybe know her, but she's a, a super uh, decorated do athlete, uh, power man champion, power women champion, and she's uh, won national champs uh, for duathlon, I believe, Euro as well. Uh, but certainly a talented athlete, and uh, she has come across the finish line, I believe. What I saw was first, but we're going to see uh, some yeah, results we'll here to, in the second shot. We'll have to wait for these these final results to come up. Really close finish there with the top three girls. Hopefully Caldwell pulled it off, and yeah. one of us will actually get it right this week. Uh, I like, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I kind of like being wrong, Sean. Uh, but we're going to we're gonna get these results here in a second, and then we're going to go straight over to the men's race pretty quickly. Men's race is starting uh, here in just a few minutes, uh, but we are going to get, it looks like, uh, here we go, Sean. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of a replay of what happened at the end of that women's race. Oh, so close across the line with Moore and Caldwell. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Lucy, you know, played her cards to me. I love watching the crits, obviously, but uh, that last lap, seeing all the ghosts uh, go off is uh, is entertaining for sure. Oh, it was Caldwell. Oh, finally, we got a winner. Somebody who picked right. Caldwell with a win, more in second, and Lucy in third. Point one seconds behind. What a close finish. Notice, I didn't hear you say that, but I, I'll take uh, I'll <laughs> take your word for it. Uh, good call, but no, great finish. Uh, those three, obviously, uh, you could throw a blanket over them there. But they're, what we were talking about earlier, Sean, it's not necessarily who spends the most watts. It's who's the smartest with them. And Sophie Caldwell at 4.5 watts per kilo gets to the front when it's important and gets uh, gets the win on the third week of the Z Pro Tri-Series. Yeah, and you can see some of those tactics, um, how you could have changed it up in the last couple laps. Two of the two of the women up front had ghost power-ups um, with a featherweight or a arrow helmet. We might have seen a, a different yeah. podium. So it's very important <clears throat> in those last couple of laps to be aware of where you're at, what power-ups you get, and how to, how to deploy them in the last two laps. 
No, absolutely. I think that's uh, spot on. And uh, that was a, that was an awesome race. Uh, I'm stoked with how all that went. Uh, really exciting to see kind of those groups come apart uh, with a few laps to go and then uh, to see uh, the kind of the cream rise to the top. Uh, but right here we saw Sky Mont. She did finish in the top 10 as she went through here. Emma Plant was one that definitely uh, put her mark on this race uh, from start to finish. I mean, every time we went through those rollers, uh, it was Emma that was making everybody everybody hurt. She tried near the end, but she didn't quite have enough of a gap. Uh, but great action here today, Sean. Yeah, really, really exciting race. And um, great to see these 25 women race on Crit City. It's a little bit different venue. We try to switch it up every week with the format, the venue, the hills, the flat. And it looks like the men are underway now. So let's let's see if it's uh, this next first couple minutes will be really intense and really hard. And hopefully uh, some of these guys can stay on top and not not get dropped off really quick smaller field we still have uh, I think I saw just under uh, no it looks like we had about 30 athletes on the men's side uh, definitely some some of the bigger names in the sport uh, which we're stoked to see them uh, come and ride with us here this morning or afternoon depending where you're at uh, but uh, Alistair Brownlee near the front of the race uh, Mark Buckingham his training partner uh, at times is up there as well uh, we see Lionel Sanders obviously in this group Lionel will not miss an opportunity to race on Zwift, uh, certainly uh, against his uh, competitors in triathlon. And, uh, but I, I think good point you make, Sean, it's, it's really, really hard at the beginning of these races, but having this group down to 30 from, I think we had close to a hundred last week, how much quote unquote easier is it gonna be for these athletes to try to stay in this front group? Well, typically on this, on Crit City, you would think it'd be, they'd be a bit easier, but as we can see, Alistair's really going hard on the, is he on the front? I can't, it's hard to, I think he's on the front. Yeah, he's pushing hard off the front. He's got a little gap already and he's gonna really string this <laughs> race out in the first lap. <laughs> By your tone, I could. I can hear, what are you doing? Is, uh, <laughs> is he at the front? Um, but uh, no, I mean, it, you definitely, you don't always uh, necessarily need to, to push off the front like that. But Alistair, he's so used to the tactics of these races that he knows, you know, he has an opportunity to get rid of maybe a couple athletes that don't have as much experience. And I, I do think I saw an athlete already get dropped off the back and there is zero chance that athlete is uh, getting back on this group, no matter how strong uh, he is. Yeah, he's making it very hard for the inexperienced Swifters. You don't know if don't know to get out as hard as you can for the first couple minutes and he's making it ex even extra hard for them to stay on so we may have lost a couple right from the gun with that move from Brownlee and and you know you can always tell when Brownlee's in the race because they're at the front both him and Johnny his brother always at the front always pushing the pace in the top three being very very tactical very strong very very good riders uh, that's awesome that's a that's from my experience watching uh, those two races, that's uh, that's accurate. You, they're always at the front, always pushing the pace. Uh, they always think they're stronger than uh, the competitors around them, and uh, quite frequently, and more often than not, they they are. So here we go through uh, this roller section that I might just call the Emma Plant section because she uh, just crushed it in that first race. If you didn't watch the women's race, uh, she definitely was the best at using the momentum of the group and kind of these uh, this undulating terrain to get to the front. Lionel Sanders is uh, the athlete in the men's race that has done it best so far as we go through on this second lap. But uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of these athletes that we see in this in this group. Super, super talented field. I think I saw Andrew Starkowitz was in here uh, as well as uh, Alistair Brownlee. Yeah, a lot of, lot of really good athletes on the men's side today. We got a couple training partners of Alistair Brownlee, uh, Mark Buckingham and Gordon Benson. So Allie's got two teammates here racing with him. Um, James Kunema is still in the front group. Rinaldo Colucci yep. is up there. Very strong cyclist, uh, former ITU athlete, and now I think racing Ironman. Um, Philip Graves, another really strong cyclist. So a lot of the guys in the top 10 right now, very, very talented cyclists, usually the strongest in, the, in most of the races they're in. So great to see this, this big yep. pack. And, and Anthony Costas there, we see 492 watts. He's been He's been really aggressive in the last couple races, finished in the top five, I think, in both. So very, very talented and strong Zwift athlete as well. He is, and I think we have some uh, athletes uh, that have watched or, and uh, spectators that have watched the last few weeks that are, who's this Costas guy? Costas has been around, and he's one that 
uh, we've definitely seen way off the front of a bunch of non-drafting races in the past. So certainly a very, very strong athlete. Uh, and he's been showing that in the first two weeks of the Z Pro Tri-Series and doing it again here on the third week. Uh, but definitely super talented, as you said, a cyclist uh, in the sport of triathlon in today's group. Matt Trabeau is in there as well. Uh, we saw Nils Frimhold. He's super, super strong athlete. Matt Trapman, uh, as well as James Kunema. Um, and uh, so super, super talented field. And right now they're kind of all just testing each other out. Matt Hansen is in there as well. Hogan Hogg is in that front group. Again, we had about 30 starters. It looked like we had maybe one drop off already, uh, but uh, tight group and a lot of watts being pushed out so far here today, Sean. Yeah, and uh, Ben Knut's still up there too. I see him. He's uh, he's a great 70.3 and ITU athlete. He's uh, he's an interesting one because he will switch back and forth from racing super sprint one week in a mixed relay on the ITU circuit to doing a 70.3 two right. weeks later. So he's he's got very high power, really used to this in and out um, cornering types, type crit racing. So he's one to watch. Um, and if it comes to a sprint finish, I wouldn't be surprised if he's he's up there on the podium too. No, absolutely. I think that's a great call. He's definitely one of the most versatile athletes we have uh, in the sport to be able to be at the top of these super sprint races. And then, you know, he was a silver medalist at uh, the 70.3 World Championships uh, in Chattanooga, I believe, a few years ago. So he's super talented over uh, uh, those different distances and strong enough to be in this front group. And, you know, as we said, we we were able to uh, make these fields a little bit smaller uh, for a course like today to add a little bit of help with verification, but to also uh, make these fields smaller so that uh, we had a, a better representation of allowing some of those athletes that maybe don't Zwift race quite so much be able to stay in the front. Because, Sean, if you have 100 athletes, like I saw Ben Canute struggled in the last few weeks. I think it was more just tactically wasn't able to stay in these groups because he'd be comfortable in a group, but then a gap would open two people in front of him, and then you just can't close it down, right? Yeah, it's, I mean... Those, those gaps really, really hurt in Zwift racing. And, and it's, you know, for some of these athletes that aren't as familiar with racing on Zwift, if you get stuck behind athletes in a really long line of 150 plus athletes and a gap opens somewhere in the middle that you can't see, you're still riding hard and doing what you should, but it's yeah. it, it, to no fault of your own, you get dropped and, and it's impossible to make back up and get back up to the leaders. So a, a little more manageable group Absolutely. here today, definitely going to be be able to be a, w a little more aware and see what's going on and, and respond accordingly. Point earlier in the coverage of the women's race is that with this small of a field, you can actually visually see what's happening, right? And you can kind of watch the watch the group. When, when it's bigger, you might feel comfortable, but a gap opens that you can't see and, and, it's, and it's done, right? And obviously there's a smaller group, there's less distance to cover, so you know, if the front of the group is, you know, theoretically 20 meters in front, all you got to do is try to, uh, you know, a few hard pedal strokes to kind of get yourself to the middle of the group. So definitely a lot easier to kind of manage. Um, and I'm, I'm sure people are wondering, asking, well, where are the rest of these athletes? Uh, we have uh, the athletes that raced last week. Uh, we've set up a, a, B, a B race uh, to add, again, to verification process. Um, so those athletes are, are racing concurrently with this a race on screen and then from there we'll kind of uh, do more verification and uh, have more athletes in uh, the next round yeah we wanted to we wanted to get a lot of the athletes that maybe are new to Zwift just getting their equipment set up and aren't familiar with how to calibrate their 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 trainers their power meters connect the right power meter um, an opportunity to race in a in a non stream race and then have the athletes that have been on Zwift know we know they're um, their trainers are dialed in and they've been, their power's yep. been kind of verified um, in this A race and stream race. So trying to e even out the playing field, make it a little fit, more fair to some of the, the guys that have been on Zwift for a long time. And then some of the newer ones will have the opportunity to qualify up to this race by racing that B race and, and seeing their performance there, we'll, we'll move them into the A field next week or the week after, depending on, on how the results play out. Yeah, and, and Philip Graves uh, near the front of the group here pushing uh, the pace. He's definitely one that has uh, decimated fields uh, during non-drafting tries and uh, has great experience at 
draft legal as well. Super, super strong cyclist. So we're stoked to see him racing with us for the first time in the Z Pro Tri Series this week in Crit City. But on screen right now, Lionel Sanders, one that definitely takes this seriously. As you said, Sean, you were out uh, at a little recon yesterday and uh, happened to find the shoulder of Lionel Sanders for a second. Yeah, we I did uh, racing Crit City and it's you know it's always hard to tell when there's over on the race um, who's actually in it and I think our, our front group split up to about 15 to 20 athletes and and right next to me is Lionel Sanders doing a little course recon too he actually messaged me during the race asked if I was doing a course recce for this broadcast and me being the out of shape athlete I am was dying to try to type back while he's just chatting away. So, uh, wasn't very, I was getting one word, one word responses out and he's typing full sentences. And after about 20 minutes of that effort, I kind of bailed and jumped out. I had, I had enough of the course. <laughs> I got the information I needed. <laughs> there you go. The things you do for, uh, just for good coverage, Sean, we, we appreciate it for sure. Uh, as we go through that rolly section, definitely a lot of power, uh, put out uh, athletes know that the momentum is important but if you put some power up at the front you might uh, be able to get rid of some athletes near the back and a bunch of our power-ups being burnt through that section and then just directly after and Sean you know we see a lot more power-ups being used this week in Crit City tell us a little bit about more why that is and uh, maybe what these athletes are looking for in power-ups yeah I mean I, I think the first the first reason we see way more power-ups being used is because they're getting a power so there's going to be 14 power, 14 laps. There'll be 14 power-ups. So we'll we'll see the athletes using them every two and a half minutes, basically. Um, there'll be a power-up being used from these athletes. We tend to see a lot of the aero helmets and feather feather weights used on that little roller section. Um, you see, I would say 80 to 85 percent of them used there. And then through the rest of the course, we'll see a lot of these drafting power-ups where athletes are. They've made it through the rollers. Now yeah. they're just trying to recover and rest on these flatter sections, get the double draft, save their legs, and then come back through those rollers again and not not be so winded. I think that's a good point, is that in some of the other races, um, and when you're riding on Zwift, you know, use the power-up to, uh, to try to go faster, uh, right, and to try to maybe get off the front or to attack. But for most of the percentage of this race course, maybe except the last lap, it's just trying to make the pain less, try to hang on the group just a little bit longer. So um, they're almost a defensive power-up uh, usage instead of offensive in this case. And But right yeah. now, Ben Canute on screen and definitely more comfortable than he's, he's been in the past. Yeah, and with, with getting 14, I think last week there was a total of power-up in the London loop they got that they could use. Right. So they're, they're definitely saving them for the hill. If featherweight, you're, you're assuredly waiting for the hill to use that. And again, we'll see all the, I would say, 80% of the power-ups go off right now on this little roller section here. Burrito doesn't really do a whole lot on the hilt. Um, if you're kind of dangling off the back, maybe you can gotta get a guy behind you to work a little harder. But if you're right in the middle of the pack, not too much benefit or doesn't really give anyone else too much negative, negative feedback. So, well, Sean, it looks like Lionel Sanders is doing a proper oh, he, attack off the front. He was over 8 watts per kilo going over that second roller and he's stuck it i i mean i think he's going for the long game with at least 20 minutes to go i mean he's at almost eight watts per kilo he's got a two second gap does he actually think he's going to go on his own here sean i think he's trying to split this group he wants to whittle whittle this down get some of these athletes that are just hanging on maybe not paying through that roll back he used a ghost power up front to make this break so so athletes couldn't see him so all of a sudden he popped up and he had a 10, 15 meter lead. It's it's very strung out behind him. We might see a couple off the back uh, miss this break here. Good point. I think Lionel is one that probably gets as much joy out of making others suffer as he does out of uh, you know having success at the front of the race. So I think he's, yeah, no, uh, he's accomplishing that. It did look like two athletes were off the back. It's still pretty strung out on the back of this pack. See if they get back on or not. Hard to tell with the uh, camera angles here. Ali's up there. He he he's now on the front, pushing the pace. Maybe trying to keep the pain up, keep the keep the athletes that are dangling off the yeah. back uh, going further back. But um, let's see if we can get an update on the athletes on the back of this pack. Situations where it's uh, if it's hurting me, it's killing them type of thing, right? So if it if it's hurting and you're Alistair Brownlee, you know a couple more hard pedal strokes, and you're going to get rid of 
uh, a percentage of the field, no doubt. And, and we certainly had some athletes getting gapped off the back of that group, but um, Cream is rising to the top. No doubt Alistair Brownlee uh, comfortably at the front right now um, with uh, Ronnie Schildneck uh, also up there, Ben Knute. Um, Hansen is up there as well, Matt Hansen, super talented, um, non-drafting, long-distance athlete, as well as, uh, let's see, Jackson Laundry is up in this front group still also. So I do. it does look like it's a little bit smaller, but we don't have a, right now a totally accurate count on who has gotten gapped off the back yet, but we'll get that for you going into this rolly section again. Yeah, and if you've ever watched an EDIT racing with Alice, always very great. One of the one of the strongest riders in the field, and also and also very encouraging of other riders to take poles. Um, it would be nice if we had a, a <laughs> mic a mic on him right now while he's uh, as he took that pole on the front and was looking for other athletes to come around and and help out. His his encouraging words are are uh, very well known in the IT. Absolutely, this is a great this is a great shot here of Matt Hansen, who's dangling off the back of the group and uh, him uh, on the left side of the screen um, as he's, he's obviously putting a bunch of effort to get back on, but it looks like he's just getting into the draft uh, as we speak. So you'll see his watts go up and then probably go down just for a second. But if he's smart, he's gonna try to move himself into the meat of this group, uh, maybe get all the way up to the front as they go through this cobbled section and then uh, kind of get some recovery as he lets himself go back a little bit. But uh, Anthony Costas isn't gonna let him uh, do it easy as he was up front at six watts per kilo, now over seven. So Anthony Costas is certainly pushing the pace at the front of this group as some athletes dangle off the back. Yeah, we're just nearing the halfway point, and I think we might see a couple of our attack through those through that rolling section to see if we can just get one or two athletes to to kind of get kind of get popped off the back here. Um, we'll see if Lionel Lionel does another attack. I know Ali's responding to those those strong moves and and being able to push over the top and keep that pace hot once the attack happens. Um, Matt Hansen clearly back up there had a had a little bit of a gap, but he's he's back in the meat of the pack, like you said, and and pretty safe for now. He had to put a bunch of work in to get there, uh, but now he's back in. Uh, we'll say big air quotes comfortably. Uh, because I'm sure Matt Hansen <laughs> isn't feeling super comfortable right now. But uh, on screen, Ronnie Schildneck, uh, maybe the second time I've ever said, uh, pronounced his name correctly. So uh, you're welcome, Ronnie. And sorry for all the other times. Uh, but Ronnie, super, super talented, uh, non-drafting athlete. He's won more Ironman uh, than I have uh, uh, fingers on my hands. Uh, super, super talented athlete and one that loves bike race too. So here they go through this rolly section and who's pushing the pace right now. It's Matt Russell over the first roller down in the descent. This is an awesome little overhead shot of how the group is getting uh, spread apart with uh, Vanderdrys at the front, uh, James Kunima. Uh, so getting spread off, there's nobody chasing on at this point, but definitely a, uh, a tough, a tough little section on those rollers. But I love that overhead shot, Sean. Yeah, and we've got a, a, another ghost power up and another attack from, it looks like uh, Shield Neck. So another, nice. another move here, another gap string out again and we'll see if uh, some of these athletes that just barely made it through those rollers can uh can bridge back up and and have the legs to do it if you could assign what your competitors get for their power up because i feel like these athletes are so competitive and ronnie's got three seconds now but they can't help themselves if they're given the ghost they're like i'm going for it i'm going off the front <laughs> It's, I mean, it's, it's a great way to use it. It's one of the ways that, um, the, in the game, the, I mean, you, all these power-ups are random. You, you get one of the five power-ups every time you go through the finish banner. It's all completely random. You don't know what you're going to get each lap. So when they get the ghost, they want to take advantage of it and use it. So uh, it's, it's fun to see that, and it's fun to see them using the gamification and making those attacks with the ghost power-up. No, that's awesome, and uh, I bet if he gets one this lap, he'll do the same thing again. But I, I, that's the biggest gap we've seen off the front. Um, certainly, Ronnie's strong enough to do it, but he had five seconds there, uh, and then he realized maybe I should uh, soft pedal for a little bit and make sure I don't get dropped as soon as this group catches me. So uh, Ronnie, uh, the animator uh, so far here in this race, eight laps in of 14 laps on Crit City. Yeah, that was, that was two laps in a row that goes power up. Uh gave someone the confidence to attack off the front. So let's see if, uh, if that trend continues and 
it will make for a much, much harder race with those big attacks through the hills and then having to try to bridge up um, the next couple hundred meters after the after you kind of flatten out on that, that section in Crit City. At Russell is in this group and he's one that's uh, uh, partaken in these races but not necessarily been uh, at the front, uh, just getting used to kind of this swift racing and uh, with this smaller field, he's right in there and as he should be, super talented athlete. He can put out more watts than uh, the most of us could dream of. Uh, so cool to see Matt Russell and the other North American Matt, Matt Hansen in this group here today as we see Anthony Costas, one who clearly is really good and talented at uh, Zwift racing as well as putting out some pretty fast bike splits um, out on the triathlon circuit as he pushes through at the front of this uh, race course as we get through that roller section. That's my favorite section so far. What's your what's your favorite section of this course, Sean? Uh, on this on this Crit City course, that's that's the best section. Today. Um, it's it's where we see the most animation. Uh, everyone using their power, really trying to gain as much advantage as they can uh, with the power ups on this on this course and. Like, uh, like we talked about in the women's race, those you're getting a power up every lap, but um, in those last two to three laps, if you've got the legs and can, I don't wanna say comfortably hang in the pack, but make it through those that roller section without using your power up, you'd, you'd like to save an aero helmet or featherweight for the finish line here today um, and not have to yep. burn it on that, on that rolling section. So I think that's good advice. Uh, as we see uh, Brafaud at the front, of the course and you know we talk about you know the crit racing and zwift racing it's it's often not who you see at the front that's going to win it's somebody who's done a great job of uh, saving as much energy and hiding and someone who 100 percent is not used to hiding or as far as i know saving any energy whatsoever is andrew starkowitz but he's doing that today we haven't really seen him at the front of this course i think he's an athlete that if you see uh, a ghost uh, usage, you might see Andrew Starkwitz try to go for a long one here uh, at some point. Yeah, he, he would be one that you, you, you think would make a long attack from try to go over that hill and power it home. Um, we saw Emma Pollan try to do that in the women's race. She got caught up in the last couple hundred meters. It didn't quite work. So I don't know if the men were, were watching that race, but um, it could take some learnings from there and bring it into, into this race. We saw Sophie Caldwell, who played it really tactically, wasn't super aggressive uh, early on, just covered all the breaks, and then had the, had the final finishing power at the end to, to just barely take the win in that, in that women's field. Pretty interesting tactics, I'll say, from Kenneth uh, at the front, uh, getting a gap and then using his arrow right as the group caught him. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe he's working as a teammate, but definitely burnt a really big match. And now the group has caught him right through the most difficult section of the course. So it uh, could be hard for him to hang on as we get through this this next session, section of the course. Yes, yeah, tactically a little questionable um, call there. Um, one of the... Like, so, so with these power-ups, they all have a, a time and a place to use them. You don't want to use, like, for instance, a draft power-up if you're on the front will do you no good. You will get no draft benefit right. if you're on the front of a pack and you use your draft power-up. Um, same, like, he, uh, again, being using a drafting power-up up a hill also doesn't do you any good. And right. while well, using a featherweight on a downhill is counterintuitive and something that would only deter you from going any faster. So... You, where and when to use the power-ups is something you learn as you race in Zwift. And uh, some of these, some riders that may not have may not have spent a lot of time or done a lot of Zwift racing and haven't used the power-ups as strategically, we may see them using them in opportune times, um, just trying to get rid of them at some point instead of actually tactically use it. Really accurate, and we'll uh, we'll see a bunch of different uses of these power-ups as we go through here. We get some lapped riders. Uh, they're going to get blown by this this uh, this lead group. Definitely no chance of getting onto that group uh, as they're they're getting passed by uh, pretty pretty quickly. But uh, Lionel Sanders one pushing the pace at the front of that uh, front of that group at about five watts per kilo. Believe it or not, that's about that's settled in kind of at this point in this crit. Uh, certainly the effort um, is is on. Gordon Benson found himself at the front of the group just quickly put a couple hard pedal strokes in and now back in the middle of the group where we see James Kenema has had a great performances uh, these last few weeks, definitely been uh, one of the athletes kind of 
animating the field uh, and in the front group, but not quite having uh, the finished power to, to be there at the end. But I think uh, I think that might change here today. Yeah, and I like the uh, the race tactics. Newt, he's been staying relatively close to the front, not making any big attacks, just just making sure he's in the pack, covering all the moves, but not not doing anything too crazy here. So. He was he was the one I was hoping I'll uh, get up there for the podium this week. I've, I've I've done some training with Ben, and I know how strong he is on the bike in both IT racing and seventy point three racing. So, let's see if uh, the third race uh, in Zwift Z Pro Tri Series is a charm for Ben today. Rolly section up and over, no big moves. Odin puts a pretty solid effort in, uh, but no gaps. Honestly, Sean, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, compared to the women's race, like it seems like less fireworks in general. Like certainly we've had these kind of like little solo breakaways where the athletes have gone off the front and then the group catches, but it doesn't seem like we've had a bunch of instances where we think the entire group's going to split into like we saw early on in the women's race. Yeah, and I, th I think we see Brownlee off the front there. He was using a, a burrito power up to go to the front, ride hard, and maybe make it make the second and third place riders maybe not go after him. Uh, but they're all they're all back together now. Um, I, it is going to be harder for these these athletes to break away on this course today. Um, even though there's that little roller right. section and the use of the power ups, it's for as strong as these riders are and and how tight knit the group is. I think it's going to be a rider will have to really get caught sleeping and really be bur have burned too many matches um, if a big attack happens to get dropped. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, maybe because we've seen such a consistent hard effort that maybe to me it's not seeming as animated, but every time I look over at this uh, positions ticker, it seems like everybody's at about five watts per kilo. So they're certainly uh, certainly working hard, and you know that by how quickly kind of they're going through this field. I mean, Sean, we only have 6K left. Uh, we're on lap 11 already, uh, so not much longer till uh, we're going to start seeing some big moves. Yeah, and we when they when they were showing Ben uh, Canute on the last screen, his his heart rate is one seventy two. So they are definitely definitely hammering on this course. We see Brownlee at one fifty seven. Yeah. Um, not sure what his max is. It looks like he's still in the yellow and not pushing the the red zone in in his heart rate. So you can see on those those displays they just showed what zone they're in based on the colors of the under the under the numbers and Brownlee at 157 was still in the yellow so it doesn't look like he's getting towards max yet I was at a casual uh, 49 kilometers an hour as well <laughs> so not so bad here we go over the rolly section and with three laps to go you know we could see something here if somebody wants to make a long move I think we're going to see it as we did uh, in the women's race Emma Plant made a hard move I think we'll probably see that in this section here but again you can only do so much when everybody's riding at five watts per kilo. So like you, you put in a seven watt per kilo effort and they're right back on you. So here we go. We do seems like Vandrace is off the front a little bit using that arrow power up and he's, he's pushing the effort in Shawnee that seven watts per kilo, definitely trying to get himself off the front of this group. Yeah, this is, this is definitely an attack. He's made a concerted effort to try to get away, try to split this up a little bit. We've uh, Hogan hog going after him and bird chase well so this this may split the group here with with what do you say under two laps to go three laps to go three laps to go 5k to go uh we've got vander Dresch off the front with two seconds gap on brafad and then brownlee a little bit of a gap but it looks like most are about three seconds back but you've got starkowitz in there you've got trapman in there uh kunima hansen that's going to be a hard group uh, to drop certainly with 5k to go they know they've got a little bit of time to bring this athlete back and uh, if he's he's going to be working pretty pretty hard to maintain that gap yeah i think that the guy the group will main group catch up here and uh, but we'll it'll be interesting to see if anyone got left in that big surge and and when it was strung out um, he's just about to get caught they'll pull him back here but um uh, it's let's see brownlee going back across over the top and continuing to keep the pace high interesting to point out or a thought to point out is uh Vanderdice, you know put that effort in um there was talk last week of uh, maybe some belgians conspiring together and working as a team and that would be a great team tactic to have uh, one of your teammates uh, go off the front with a really hard effort with three laps to go to make everybody else work to bring it back and if that was the case uh hats off that was a that was a strong strong good move
Yeah, and talking about team tactics, I see Buckingham and Benson are still in this group, both riders that train with Alistair Brownlee. We could see some team tactics there. Um, I don't know if yep. uh, they've got anything planned or it's every man for themselves in this, in this front group for uh, Team GB. Probably a little easier to do your own thing when uh, Alistair Brownlee isn't yelling at you person to person to <laughs> do work for him or asking politely, I should say. Uh, encouragement. Here we go. Yeah, encouragement. Here we go through that rolly section. Definitely uh, see some orange and red numbers uh, on the, the walk counter. What, is, what does that mean when we see those numbers go, go red, Sean? Yeah, when you on the right-hand side, when you see your numbers go red, you, it's a certain percentage over your and usually means basically sprinting power. Um, so you see it on those little rollers. They sprint up and over those those rollers. They go up to seven, eight watts per kilogram, and and that's where you see the the numbers turn to orange. So you'll tip, you'll see it on the sprint finish. The whole board should be orange, um, unless we've got guys that kind of know they're, they're going to make it. And we got Matt Hansen here off the back. It looks like a gap is opening up, and this is going to be very hard for him to close, and if not impossible. Yeah. It's not coming back. There's a elastic right now is stretching uh, and that's going to snap pretty hard. I think when it does, I mean, but that's an athlete. He's still, he was pushing out about five Watts per kilo uh, to try to, to bridge back, but you simply can't, I mean, you've got a group that is that big working together. The draft is just too much for you to be able to pull back no matter how strong you are. Matt Hansen giving it uh, his best effort, but it looks like uh, he's going to be counted out. Uh, for the finish today as we get back to the front with Alistair Brownlee at the front of the group with Ronnie Schildneck, Andrew Starkowitz uh, finds his way to the front of the group, Lionel Sanders, Philip Graves, and uh, that is that is a pretty stout uh, finished group, a bunch of strong cyclists. Uh, so, okay, now we're within 2K to go, 2.5K to go, Sean. Who's your pick? Ben Canoe. I've been saying it all day. I'm just going to stick with it. Ben Canoe. Awesome. Uh, ben Canute. And who am I going to pick? I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to pick Costas. He's so consistent. I think uh, these last few weeks and uh, he's got the power to do it. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick Costas for the win here today. All right, here we go. One, just under 2k to go. James cut him up on screen, 365 Watts, five beats per minute. They're just making this turn. Going to go through the last roll, rolly section here. And uh, we'll see if everyone uses their power-ups. I, I would assume a lot of these guys are going to be saving it for the finish line here. You see only two or three, four power-ups being used. Um, light, uh, using the featherweight on, at this point could be a bit of a mistake. Uh, when would, if you had the featherweight, when would you use it, Sean? Sprint finish, both for the featherweight and the aero helmet. You sprint just to give you that little extra in a second to get across get ahead of uh, some of your competitors who may not have those those power-ups. There you go. If you're listening in, save that one uh, for next week. Uh, but right now we've got uh, just under a mile to go, 1.2K. Uh, last lap coming through here. We've got Vanderdrys back on the front, Buckingham, uh, Ronnie Schildneck, Costas, Kunima, Troutman, Laundry, Odin, and Hogenhog all in the front pushing the pace. We've got athletes using the draft power-up as we speak. Group is getting smaller, kind of uh, uh, accordioning through this section. Guys are getting gapped off and back on. Uh, two more athletes back off the front of this group. Lionel Sanders pushing the pace. 800 meters to go, Sean. Yeah, both. So we got a Lionel up there, top five. Brown, fifth, Troutman, Costas really doing really well in positioning up at the front now. He's, he's to the lead and he's pushing the pace. Brownlee again up to the front. He's, this is going to be a qu close one at the, at the finish line here. It's going to be all within a second for sure. Absolutely. And it was a sprint finish on that first week and Lionel Sanders was kicking himself because he felt like he went too early. And I would agree with his assessment there. Uh, he went a little too early and let the other athletes use him and his draft as a launch pad for when they wanted to go. But uh, he wasn't uh, sprinting against Alistair Brownlee then. Uh, so we'll see if Alistair maybe uh, forces him to go a little bit early. But right now it's Ronnie Schildenek goes off the front. Anthony Costas taking the sprint out early. 120 meters to go. It's Costas Kunima Kanut. Cost is still in the front. Kunima, Canoe, Bridget. Looks like Lionel's making a move. Oh, looks like, I, oh. <laughs> did Lionel get it? Got it at the very end. I think he did. <laughs> oh, we're waiting That's for that. That's gonna be it's so sick. close. Oh man, so Costas definitely went pretty early. I, you know, 200 meters to go. You wouldn't think is that early, but if you've got all these other athletes pushing 
uh, that power. You want to go around at the last second, and it looked like Sanders timed it to get around uh, Costa's shoulder, but he didn't. It was oh. a virtual tie. <laughs> We're going to have to go to the photo finish. Looks like Costa's had it, but uh, Sanders timed it to come around exactly at the finish line. Yeah, Crazy. that was a, a, a long attack from Shield, Nick. Costas was, it was positioned perfectly to sit behind him and and make an attack when he started to fade. And Lionel coming from way back with a really big attack, timed perfectly um, to what looks like a photo finish. I don't yeah. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull a winner from the two. Uh, yeah, provisionally, uh, Costas uh, up at the top, but uh, yeah, we might uh, might might call that one a tie. But point zero zero seconds. Uh, that is crazy. Certainly, uh, both those athletes had different tactics on when to unleash their sprint. And I mean, if if the finish line was 15 meters further, Lionel would have won by a bike length, right? That's how uh, quick he, he was coming. He, he that was a great time sprint by Lionel, and really close so hard the last 10 meters to to I mean get get the tie for the win or or come in second, but. Uh, yeah, what a what a finish there. Ben Canute up to fourth. A uh, great race from him today. Good to see him um, crushing the crushing this on Crit City. He's uh, he's a little further back than I think he'd wanted to be the last couple of weeks. And here's a replay. We're going with Ronnie Shieldneck on the tack, or Kenneth Vanderice on the tack. I think this is earlier into the race. Yeah, this is a nine k to go. It was Ronnie who made the tack right at the very end. I'm getting official word, Sean, coming over our ticker that uh, Casas was one two hundred or two thousandth, excuse me, of a second in front of Lionel Sanders. So Casas gets the win by an immeasurable amount physically, uh, but it sounds like one two thousandth of a second after all that. Uh, so I will say thank you uh, for that uh, for that gap, Casas. You got me the call for the win. Um, so we both did okay today, but that amazing performance. Uh, Vinyl is going to be pleased that he timed it better, but is he is that going to eat him up to lose by that close? Of course, Lionel is such a competitor. He's anytime there's not the number one in front of his name, he's going to be upset. So he's this is just going to fuel him even more. But I mean, a perfectly timed attack, just I mean, yeah, two thousand two one hundredths of a I didn't even know how to pronounce that zero zero point two of a second back. It's it's so, so close and an uh, incredible race from those guys. And this Crit City course was, uh, I mean, very, very exciting racing today. A lot of really close sprint finishes and um, great to, it'll be interesting to see the format next time and who comes out on top uh, in a different format and a different race. Absolutely. I think it was great. You know, having these smaller fields uh, was, uh, I think, a success here today. And uh, we... We enjoyed the racing and the athletes definitely provided awesome experience. Uh, thanks uh, so much for joining uh, us here today. Everybody back at home uh, for Sean Jefferson. I'm Matt Lieto. And until next time, ride on.